What up, friends? We live in strange times. And fittingly enough, today I'm going to be reviewing Gorillaz' newest album, Song Machine Season 1, Strange Times. Gorillaz, you know them, you love them, you've definitely heard them before. The virtual band created by singer-songwriter Damon Albarn and illustrator Jamie Hewlett have released the first part in their Song Machine series in the form of Season 1, Strange Times. The album rollout was pretty interesting for this one, uh, with nearly every song on the record being released as a single in almost a sort of monthly fashion, and the videos feature animations from Jamie Hewlett along with sort of behind the scenes looks at how the songs were created. This sort of haphazard way of releasing and compiling songs can be a struggle for some, but I mean, these guys are professionals. While this does result in a sort of jagged and separate sounding album when the quality of every track is so high, I mean, it's inconsequential. Now we begin with strange times, like what an opener this is. The weirder side of Gorillaz is here in full effect with a lot of help from The Cure's Robert Smith. Smith's vocals add a sort of frantic energy to the haunting keys and xylophone sounds along with a sort of omnipresent horn segment. Damon's nonchalant and dark vocals mix with this vibe perfectly, as the beat kicks into the sort of apocalypse party. The creepiness also extends to the lyrics comparing the confusion that we're feeling in the modern world to a sort of twilight web and the death of fantasies. Valley of the Pagans is definitely my favorite track on this album. Beck and Damon are a match made in heaven, and I am completely surprised that they never got together sooner. The trippy groove along with the bass and eclectic samples fit Beck's style perfectly. Damon also slips into the sort of pseudo falsetto before channeling rhinestone eyes. In fact, this whole song almost feels like a Plastic Beach tribute in a way. I also really love the flowing synth during the chorus in Beck's second verse. The outro of the song is a culmination of this track's funky grooves as it, weirdly enough, transitions into almost like an electro surf rock song. It's pretty interesting. Equally, the lyrics are also pretty tongue-in-cheek, dealing with topics like hedonism and over-optimism, and how someone is hoarding all the goddamn Viagra tablets. The soul and R&B elements on the Lost Chord are top notch, especially when backed up by the fluttering vocals of Lee John. That bass line is funky as hell, and I love Damon's vocals on this track. It's not often that you hear him going into this register, and that makes it even more special. It works especially well when Lee and Damon harmonize. The electronic samples and quips provide a mesmerizing background to the sort of warmer string segments and guitar patterns, too. Pac-Man comes next, and this one kicks off with an extremely smooth bass line and drum pattern, almost sort of in a Demon Days aesthetic. I also really got this from Damon's sort of raspy whisper tone here, too. There's some electro bass and samples that would feel right at home in the Luigi's Mansion soundtrack, along with some spacey guitar and synths that lead into Schoolboy Q's excellent verse. He brings a lively energy to the slower beats, while also following it closely. It's impressive that he pulled that off so well. The comparison to the sort of survival of the fittest nature of the world to video games like Pac-Man is a pretty interesting comparison, especially how we have to constantly worry about leveling up and staying ahead. Chalk Tablet Towers is a very electropop inspired song with fun and simple synth rhythms and Damon's sort of distorted and quirky vocal style, I would say. It has a very playful vibe that makes me think of toy instruments, weirdly enough. It is a bit simple compared to the other songs on the album, though, which might make it a bit less interesting in comparison. I do like the background vocals from St. Vincent, but I wish she had an actual verse or something. I feel like she's a little bit underutilized, as is. I do love the harmonies between her and Damon as they're coming back at the end of summer, though. Next up is Pink Phantom, and uh, what a track. Two completely unlike features to tell a beautiful tale of love from different angles. The simple intro with Damon whispering over an isolated piano beat is the perfect transition into Black just crooning over a love gone wrong. Elton John's bombastic chorus also really invigors this feeling of hopefulness and change. I also really like the sort of subtle touch 
with Black's vocals being very sort of quiet and somber, Elton's being more loud and empowering, and Damon kind of serving as the balance between the two. Not to mention that the harmonies between these three are incredible. Aries is basically what would happen if Damon Albarn were to make a New Order song. <laughs> Hell, it even has Peter Hook on it. Like, I'm not kidding. It really does just sound like a New Order song with Damon on vocals. Maybe from, like, New Order's Brotherhood era or something. I'm not complaining, though, because it's literally one thing that I like, another thing that I like, together. Hook's bass tone is immediately recognizable, and I really like the sort of drum machine beat that gives this track a new wave seal of authenticity. Damon's vocals are soaring in parts, again, exploring a register that you don't hear too often from him. I love the background vocals that come in during the halfway mark, and the way that the instrumental just soars with Damon, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Mwah. Chill. It's chilly, almost. Now, if there were to be one track that I'm not the most keen on, it would probably be Friday the 13th. It's not bad, per se. It's just a bit boring compared to all the other fantastic songs on here. Octavian's vocals are not the best, and he doesn't really bring a lot of energy, either. The beat, while not the most interesting thing, does fit his flow, though, all things considered. I feel like if they sped up the track, it would be more interesting, as I really do like the guitar and horn segments. They sort of give the song a weirdly laid-back and tropical vibe. Not much else jumps out about me on this song, though, unfortunately. Dead Butterflies is another pretty unique one, with a sort of melancholic touch in its piano over a very skeletal and bare beat. Damon's vocals here are haunting. He's singing in a way that like I haven't heard from him since the self-titled, probably. I love the emptiness that this track displays and the heavy bass and machine-like aesthetics that come in here and there. They just ram this point home. The keys in Roxani's vocals really give this track an air of beauty though and Kano's smooth flows fit the sound very well. All three of their vocal textures, in fact, express very different feelings, which I thought is really interesting to hear. The lyrical comparison of a failed love to dead butterflies is also very beautiful and tragic, I think. Nearing the end of the record, we get to Desole. The Latin flair to this one adds some welcome variety on the album, if it's, as if this album didn't have enough variety already. I also really love the elegant guitar and playful maracas as a backdrop. I think it was an interesting choice to have this track be more subdued, especially as Latin music is often very lively, but I think it does add a lot to this track's unique beauty overall. The string segments that come in during the chorus are surprising in a great way and really propel the song forward. There's a lot of subtleties on this track, in fact, they don't really notice them until you actually keep an ear out for them, because they just come together so well. That horn segment that comes in near the last third of the song is a really triumphant phase of the record. It's almost like a weird sort of send-off, even though this isn't the last track. The last track, though, Momentary Bliss, like, damn, what a closer. It's an interesting choice to have a Britpop song and the album, but you know, I'm not complaining, and I suppose it is fitting, if you really think about it. The Lazy Guitar is a great opener, it's a, it is, it's a perfect summary of the album's weirder sounds. It's not long after until we sort of blast off into a punky guitar-driven charge with Slow Tie and Slays leading it. There's also some especially prevalent lyrics about loving yourself and changing the world from the better by looking out for and supporting others. It's probably one of the most British songs I've ever heard, but that's just one of its charms. Crashing guitars and drums are wrapped in odd synths as Damon is just channeling b Blur at this point, leading us to the crazy climax and outro of this fantastic fucking album. Like, what a project this is, man. This is absolutely Gorillaz's best output since Plastic Beach in 2010. The sheer variety here is incredible, and it's not only held together by the by the consistency of Damon's vocals, but also just the constant weirdness that comes in. It can be argued that this album could have been stronger if it had a bit more cohesion and it wasn't a sort of collection of singles, and that might be true, but I mean, every song is so good. 
I, I, I think it can stand on its own. Some features might have been a bit underutilized or might not have fit in as well as others, but these are such minor gripes. They're just overshadowed by how good the rest of this thing is. I'm feeling a strong nine on this. Like, this is so good. This is so good. Like, Gorillas does it again. They do it again, baby. Let's go. Of course, we do have to talk about the album cover on this show, and I really like this album cover a lot. It has that sort of quirkiness with the toy piano and all the motifs everywhere. I think that sort of shade of blue is also really iconic, I suppose, can be a word. It just has that sort of gorilla's aura about it. It's quirky, it's fun, it's not taking itself too seriously, but you know it's like, this is a project, man. These are professionals at work, and... I love that about it. It's a, it's a perfect cover for a Gorillaz album, I think. But what did you guys think about it? Was this the Gorillaz comeback that you've been waiting for? I know it, I know it was for me, even though I did like the Now Now, but uh, that being said, this album was incredible. So let me know what you thought about it. And until the next one, farewell.